Welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I'm Stevie B. Happy to have you all with me today. Guys, I will tell you right off the bat, I'm just not feeling it today. I've tried to record videos for the past two hours. I don't like the way any of them come out, so this is my last shot at this one, and then I'm just going to upload it whether I like it or not. I've also made a video about portable repair units and portable TT units. I don't necessarily like the video, but I'm going to upload it also, it will probably come out the day before or the day after this one. So if it's not my best work, please excuse me. I'm just having a little bit of an off day. But today I want to answer a question I got from a player. They saw my video the other day about how new and low level players see players that are super high level. And they should actually aspire to get to that level themselves, not be discouraged that somebody else is already there. And they totally agreed with me, but they said, you know, it is disheartening. When we see people like Eve, who is one of the biggest names in the game, getting multiple very, very valuable 20th anniversary items, and the average player will probably never loot a single one. So how is that fair when Eve is looting the DOA Strike Hammer Improved Twin Edition, and she's also looting the 20th anniversary edition Protector of the Empire Foot Guards, female, both within 24 hours, versus the rest of us mere mortals will probably never loot anything. Well, this is why I like the 20th anniversary setup that Mindark is doing, even though it's kind of bad <laughs> in a way, because there's no real way to game it. There also is a way to game it. So, let's just start slow here, because there's so much to unpack in this. First of all, this is not set up like Mayhem. It's not set up as a competition. It's not set up like the 15th anniversary, where you had to loot tokens and people were buying and trading the tokens. This is set up that if you're hunting, there's a chance that you might get a drop. That's the only requirement, right? Well, let me ask you something. Do you guys remember this? Somebody's putting this up for sale right now as we speak in Cali Trade for TT plus 6,000 ped. This is the Solimate Apollo Twin Edition. I know it's Apollo, uh, Opolo, whatever. I call them Apollos. 68% efficiency, 49 attacks per minute. 6.6 DPS. 6.6 DPS. Yet, this weapon is in Cali Trade right now for TT plus 6,000 ped. Now, as a newer low level player, would you be happy to loot an item that you could sell for 6,000 ped? I would be. I think that would be a good day. But do you guys even remember me talking about this weapon? Or do you only remember me talking about the improved justifier twin with 95 percent efficiency can you guys tell me the name of the player who discovered this weapon or can you only tell me the names messy and eve so this is almost an example of negativity bias these apollos there's been several of these that have dropped probably over a dozen now i, w I would say probably easily a dozen of these have now dropped however the strike hammer only one these foot guards only one the justifier improved only one but it's almost like negative negativity bias if you go play poker you're going to remember the hands you lose far easier than you're going to remember the hands that you win correct if you have a bad experience in a business you're going to remember the bad experience far easier than you're going to remember the good experience right negativity bias well it's similar because when I say messy, when I say Eve, when I say names that you guys are familiar with, you remember that a lot easier than when I say a random person's name. What was the name of the person that I mentioned five videos ago? Anybody? Yeah, I can't tell you either. Because when it comes to the big names, we know them, we're used to them, we hear them all the time. When it's somebody we've never heard of before, it doesn't stick with us. When it's a 95% efficiency new super weapon, it sticks with us. When it's a 6 DPS weapon, it doesn't stick with us. That doesn't make these Apollo Twins any less valuable. 6,000 ped, that's pretty good money. And if you're a low level or new player, or mid-level even, and you manage to loot one, that's almost definitely going to put you into profit zone, right? So, no, it's not a 200,000 ped item. But it's a 6,000 pet item. And that's the thing. This is the type of event where new, low-level, and mid-level players are getting those types of drops. Very, very rarely. It's still a one-in-a-billion shot, but it is happening. Now, 
like I said, I've tried to make this video a couple times, so I will make a whole different video talking about hunting punies versus hunting fowls versus hunting thorophoids and cost to kill and multipliers and TT values and items in the loot pool and all that because if I try and pack all that into this video, it's just too much. I've, I've tried it three times and it just doesn't work. So I'm going to avoid that altogether. But needless to say, this event is set up so that new, low-level, and mid-level players have a shot too. Now that being said, if everybody has a shot, why is Eve getting two 20th anniversary items and we haven't scored a single one? Well, let me ask you this. If I came to you right now and I said, hey, get on a plane. I've got the MIT Blackjack team with me. I'm going to take you to Vegas. And the MIT Blackjack team is going to play Blackjack 24-7 around the clock for the next week. And so are you. And then at the end of the week, we're going to see who did better. I can pretty much guarantee you that the MIT Blackjack team is going to do better than you're going to do. Why? They have put hundreds of thousands of man hours into practicing, into honing their craft, into making it their profession. They have invested heavily, not only in knowledge, but in financing their play, their bankroll. How much practice have you had? Zero? What could you do? Possibly read a book on the way to Vegas? How much of a bankroll and investment do you have? The money that's in your wallet right now? So, in a context of real world, it would seem insane to assume that somebody brand new would have the same odds as somebody who's been doing it as a career, as a profession, who's really tried to hone their craft and made a huge investment. But yet, in game, that's what we expect. Well, would it surprise you to know that I can tell you, I know for a fact, Eve has been hunting high-level drones, level 60 to 90, around the clock for almost a week now. And I know that because I've been watching the global messages come through. I've been seeing when she globals on them. And it's when I go to work. It's when I get home from work. It's when I go to bed. It's when I get up from being in bed. It's literally around the clock. Does the average player, not even low level or new or mid level, does the average, even high level player, just the average player at all, have the stomach to hunt a high level mob over and over and over and over 24 hours a day for multiple days on end? and take the chance that they're going to get 95% loot returns and they're just going to lose that 5% of what they're cycling and never get that one in a billion item? Could you stomach that? There was no guarantee she was going to get a 20th anniversary item at all. Now, she got lucky. She didn't just get one, she got two. And they're very valuable items. But there was no guarantee of that. She could have just been cycling ped to lose that 5% over and over and over and over and over endlessly. There's a lot of players in game, I would say the vast majority of players in this game, that could not stomach the thought of that, who wouldn't even attempt it for that reason. Now let's go a step beyond that. She has put in the time, the money, to even have the skills to be able to hunt something that high level. And that, like I said, goes into a whole discussion in cost to kill versus multipliers versus TT value of something in your loot. So that's a whole different topic. But needless to say, she's not hunting puny creatures. She's hunting something that's level 60, something that's level 90, something that's got a very high cost to kill, so therefore is going to give her a much, much, much better shot at looting something valuable than something with a very, very low cost to kill. And that's a whole separate video we'll make later. But needless to say, she's invested heavily and the skills just to be able to hunt that. I tried to hunt a level 63 drone. I just wanted to see if I could do it. I even had armor designed for drones. I walked up and it smacked me like I was a fly. Literally one hit me, get out of here. <laughs> so she has put in a lot of time and a lot of effort into even getting her skills up. Not to mention the gear. She has the gear that has a high enough efficiency, a high enough damage per peck, a high enough damage per second to be able to loot those items. She has armor good enough to be able to help her hunt, to be able to loot those items. And she has the in-game knowledge to be able to hunt those things, to loot those items. Now, theoretically, like I said, theoretically, those same items could drop from any creature, a puny creature, let's say, a level four foul, let's say. There was a reason I was specifically hunting level four foul. There's a reason that I have switched to Thorfoid, which have a slightly higher cost to kill. However, theoretically, the same things that she looted 
in the past 24 hours theoretically could have been looted from a level 4 foul or a puny or a thorfoid theoretically and again the whole loot thing is a whole different video for a whole different day so let's just ignore that for now but it could theoretically be done also remember I made a video a while back I said usually what you loot will be something that you won't want to keep to use it will be something you will want to sell and the people who do not have the ability to loot it themselves will be inclined to buy it that is what makes this economy work that's what makes this game work if we could just go out and grind endlessly and get every single thing we wanted there would be no economy for the game other than a convenience economy so in her example in one of the videos that i shot prior to this shooting like I said, I've shot this video like three or four times now. I actually said, you know, Eve's gear is so good, I don't see her getting rid of her current setup to use the DOA strike hammer. I think she'll just sell it, which is how it's designed. The game is designed that she loots something she doesn't need, and then she sells it to somebody who does need it, who can't go loot it themselves. So do I think Eve is going to get rid of her current setup to use the strike hammer instead? No, not at all. Well, sure enough, in Cali Trade right now, I made that video about an hour ago. She has the strike hammer up for sale. Want to sell DOA strike hammer improved twin edition. <laughs> so exactly right. She looted it, not because she wants to use it, but because she wants to turn around and sell it for a profit. Other people will be interested in buying it because they know they do not have the capability to go loot it, but yet it is vastly better than what they're currently using, what their current setup is. So it's functioning exactly as it is designed to function to keep the economy functioning so for all of these reasons it is not unrealistic that we see the biggest names in the game looting these 20th anniversary items what you have to keep in mind is that this specific event has indeed given low and mid-level and even new players the ability to loot items that most people are forgetting most people are not thinking about the short blade 10 20th anniversary edition that was looted most people are not thinking about all those opolos that were looted most people are only thinking about the few ubers in game who have looted the few best of the best of the best of the twin items in game there have been dozens of players that you would not even know their names but they've looted 20th anniversary items and no they're not in game items but they're items that they have sold that have made them substantial amounts of money. So that makes it probably one of the best events in game, in, in my opinion. In some respects, I like it because of that. In some respects, I don't like it because of that. In some respects, I do like competitions better. I do like events like the FEN event where we could go loot the tokens and then the tokens were tradable and there was a market for the tokens. Yurta, yurta, yurta. However... I think it's nice to see events like this because even if we don't remember all those low and mid-level players who were looting the, the Apollos, the Short Blade 10, stuff like that, they did do it and they did make money doing it. They did profit and that is, at the end of the day, the kind of stuff that we do need in this game. We need players who can say, hey, I only played for three weeks and I looted this Apollo 20th Anniversary Edition and I managed to sell it and make 6,000 pet. That's exactly what we need. So just because you don't remember every single 20th anniversary item that was looted, just because you don't remember every single player who looted one, doesn't mean it hasn't been happening. In fact, there's a thread over on PCF where they're trying to keep track of every single person who loots a 20th anniversary item. Go take a look at it. It's a lot more low and mid-level players than you would think. But needless to say, this also makes a very good argument for why we should aim to eventually get to that level to eventually get to the level where we have those skills where we have that gear where we have that knowledge just like i said in my last video so that we can loot those super valuable items one two three at a time just like eve did today now she was lucky that might be a once in a lifetime thing but she was still able to pull it off so good for her so i'm going to leave it right there for today like i said we'll make a whole nother video talking about cost to kill loot multipliers odds of getting an item in your loot damage per peck the value of the item whenever you loot it compared to the actual tt value how that plays a role why i switched from foul to thorfoid because of the cost to kill year to year to year to. we'll get to all that in another video but for now we'll leave it there for today so guys head over to earnped.com because when you earn we earn obviously that's the best way you guys can help support us 
when you go to earnped.com, when you log in, just use the links on the website to go to hideout.tv. It will automatically know you came from EarnPed and it will add us as a redemption option for your hideout points. Guys, please be sure and hit all three buttons that YouTube offers you. The like button on the videos, the su subscribe button for the channel, and the bell icon to be notified when we post new content. Because when you do those three things, YouTube gives us more exposure. And that exposure is usually to people who play PC games, MMOs, and real cash economy games. And it's usually the first time they've heard of Entropia. They end up getting the exposure. They see the video. They start watching the channel. They subscribe. They like the videos. Four, five, six months down the road, they start playing Entropia. They become part of the community. They become part of the economy. So it's not just us. You're helping everybody, including yourself, because that person very possibly could buy something off of you two, three, four years down the road. And the only reason they're in game at all is because you hit that button and they saw the video as a result. So it helps you too. So we really appreciate it and ask that everybody would do that every single time. Every single like on every single video matters. Every single subscriber matters. It really does. Guys, for earnped.com, I've been Stevie B. Sip, sip, smack, smack. Y'all know the rest. Take care, Stevies.